taken a break from portfolio reviews, but um, I do still want to continue to share the opportunity with M1 Finance. You know, in this environment, it's amazing to me how many people are looking for shortcuts, um, looking to uh, potentially even retire, if not partially or holistically, on cryptocurrency. Um, when you've got guys like myself who can continually come on and, and show that um, wealth building doesn't need to be uh, the uh, pie in the sky approach, it can be deliberate, uh, it can be responsible, uh, it can be uh, with very little stress, if any. Uh, this is um, an, a portfolio that I've put together here. Now it's got 100 uh, stocks. I'm going to um, demonstrate for you the holdings in here, show you the uh, uh, additional uh, last slice. That I've added, uh, I've declared this to you guys before, and it's got it had 10, it's got 11. Now I added real estate uh, in here to go ahead and round out this portfolio. I've done my due diligence on the uh, real estate REIT segment, and uh, I'll show you those uh, holdings when we get to it. But for you guys that are new to the M1 experience, this is a whole different way of investing. It certainly is catered to those investors that are interested in taking more of a passive uh, hands-off approach. Um, there is a little bit of uh, initial work that needs to be done to determine how it is you want to take advantage of the M1 finance opportunity. Um, I have three accounts. Uh, two of them are comprised in here. Uh, the bond portfolio is, is the other. We're not going to chronicle that today. Here it is. Just uh, a shy of $1,600 in the bond portfolio. Uh, but uh, for this as purposes, as a taxable brokerage account within M1, um, I started this uh, uh, late 2019, so uh, just over a couple years old here in this account, uh, about two, two years and what is that, five months going on? So, you know, just over two and a half, just under two and a half years in this portfolio, and for new investors who are looking at this landscape and they're confused and they want to know, you know, which direction to go, what type of, of investor they want to be. Maybe that, maybe you don't know yet. Um, this will help uh, identify for you guys that don't know me. Um, my name is Ryan. I've been investing for well over 25 years of my life. I started young uh, in my life, um, screwed up half the time. And uh, if I had the knowledge uh, that I have now back then, I, I would already be sitting on millions of dollars. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, there's no real shortcuts. To building wealth at least properly certainly you can get luck i can't teach luck uh, i can absolutely teach fundamentals and this is just one of many uh, strategic elements of my program that i run that of which is the dividend growth portfolio uh, it's one of those life hacks that i talk about on in route to a million dollars dividends are free money and uh, it's just about as close to a guarantee as you can possibly get in the stock market um, these gains are undeniable uh, the earned dividends, this portfolio really, it's amazing, almost pays me a dividend every single day. Now, mind you, there's 100 stocks here with just uh, around 33,500 in the account. So the dividends that are rendered off that, just to give you some perspective, they're, they're not going to be hundreds of dollars of dividends because there's a few hundred dollars in each of these names, okay? But those dollars add up over time. And my strategic goal is to continue to fund this, yes, to continue to dollar cost average it, uh, to continue to build this up to its first uh, strategic goal. My end goal is 100,000. If I can get it up to 250, I think that would be great. Um, but we're two incentive thresholds away, 50,000 and then, and then up to 100,000. And for an account that's just shy of two and a half years old, um, I, I cannot scoff at the progress in this. I'm very satisfied with the progress. Some of you guys may, you know, disagree or you, you may want it uh, quicker than that. that. That's no problem. I, I, I bid you all the best. Um, I, you're not going to hear me uh, buy into that in that I, I can help you. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, I, I provide this information free of charge so you guys can come in and, and enjoy the information and how I wealth build. You can see here the value over time. Um, these are uh, small strategic fund ups. These are strategic buying injects that I take in the market. Uh, usually a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars maybe. Uh, but here you can see the churn in the portfolio. And then the last strategic buy up was a was a nice one. Um, that was one that I bought on what I considered to be a small dip in the market. You can see here it doesn't dip very often. 
Uh, and But when it does, I, I, I look to take advantage of that. Um, not to time the market. I could be wrong on every one of them. Uh, but I pay attention, and when the markets are down a few basis points, then I, I take a strategic stab at it. Um, so this is the, the allocation. This portfolio is made available to you in the description below. Um, Independent Investor Channel um, is and always will be affiliated with M1 Finance. I do have other accounts. I have been solicited by other brokers, uh, and M1 Finance uh, currently is the only one um, that I feel comfortable with uh, as an affiliate, uh, other accounts I use. Uh, but I, I think this really has the most potential to help uh, beginning investors buy into the passive philosophy, and M1 Finance is tailor-made for those passive uh, investors out there. So uh, please know by sharing this information, I can receive a small compensation for providing uh, these tutorials for you. I enjoyed doing it. I wish I would have had this opportunity to sit across, across from somebody like myself who uh, is well-intentioned. I, I would have this account whether or not I shared it or not. Um, take the information or leave it. It's no problem. Like I said, the portfolio is uh, available to you uh, in its uh, in, in its partial uh, in the description below. There's about 50 holdings. Uh, it's maxed on what I can actually share. But this portfolio has uh, actually double that. It's got 100 holdings in it. Uh, but just I want to show you guys kind of the relative amounts here, just shy of 5,000. That's my biggest sector, technology, and it's my biggest weighting here at 12%. Um, I adjusted these weightings a little bit to make a little bit of room down here for this slice, which should fund tomorrow in the market. Um, this is sitting at about 9%. Uh, just a little bit of strategic adjustment here. Some It'll roll some profits off and, and look to fund this pie here as we look to... Uh, add real estate into the mix here, but uh, all the way down to 1700 in the material sector uh, and then up. You can see how I've got this broken down, very, very clean. It represents the 11 uh, sectors uh, in the S&P 500, healthcare, financials, consumer staples, industrials, and the like. So let's jump in and we'll take a look at the holdings here. The holdings are holding in great. I, I mean, you know, there's some volatility here. Obviously, the eight positions in the REITs will add tomorrow. Uh, so we've got 92 at the time of filming this video. Working at a great clip. I just cannot, um, I cannot uh, deny the progress in the, this portfolio. And we're going to continue to grow these holdings. I mean, you know, we're en route here to $1,000 in, in Visa. What if, what, what if I could get all of these up to a thousand dollars in in each of these holdings now we're talking about a hundred thousand dollar portfolio and you know this allows me to dollar for dollar build this wealth uh, slowly over time so um, it's a it's a lot of fun to invest this way very fun yeah you know, I get notified every time I get paid a dividend and I'm just gonna scroll through here guys I don't need to go through every one of these you guys will recognize a lot of these value plays a lot of these are Dow components and some of the uh, more uh, large cap uh, types of names. Uh, some of the real estate REITs that I added um, are in the seven, eight billion dollar range, so a couple of mid cap offerings, but my largest holding uh, in the REIT category will be AMT, American Tower REIT, which is one of my absolute favorite. I, I did not buy Simon Property Group this time. I bought Cold Storage, uh, Stag, WP Carey. Um, those names hold, hopefully will come up here. I don't know if they've Got to buy first to show up in my list of, of offerings here. But tra Travelers Insurance here, uh, the Dow component, uh, Telecom here with Disney. Um, it's been a real drag. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind taking these good quality companies into a downturn. And the cool thing about investing with M1 is, is that if you do uh, subject, you know, your portfolio to to incurring a little bit of downturn, gosh, these other names sure do buffer the the opportunity. I mean, Eli Lilly. This would have been one that I wouldn't have really put a large position in, but $224 uh, off of just shy of two shares, you know? So, you know, for you guys, and I've got a little bit of scrutiny for this portfolio. That's no problem. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not immune to scrutiny on social media. I, I absolutely believe that um, it makes for a better discussion, but please understand this is, this is just my way. And, you know, for a lot of people, if you look at this and you agree with some of the holdings, but you disagree with the allocation, great. Now we're furthering the discussion for you to start to uh, graduate to a better place as an investor. Because this, again, for me, meets a phenomenal strategic goal of dividend growth. And this isn't the only dividend 
uh, 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 basket that I have per se. I have dividend growth in my taxable bro brokerage account, which is significantly larger than this account. And my two Roth IRAs also have uh, dividend growth. It's a strategy that I believe in. It's a strategy that I pursue. Uh, it's a strategy that I don't buy into singularly. I, I uh, pursue growth. Uh, and, and I also pursue uh, passive investments through diversified ETFs and index funds. So I do it all. And uh, you can really benefit from sitting across in a 10-minute message and really understanding a holistic perspective in how I fill out my financial category within, within my pyramid of needs. And for you guys that uh, have been with me as of late, you, you guys have understood, look at that, less than a share, one share of Costco, uh, up $178. And you can't uh, deny these. And with the volatility in the market, you're going to see, I mean, AT&T has just really rolled off 22 shares. This has um, actually uh, split off into uh, Discovery Media. Um, so that was uh, some shares of stock that I got for free. Uh, I do own a larger position in the taxable account. There's Enbridge. Look at Enbridge up over 22%. Fantastic. Just shy of 10%. That's one of the large dividend payers in the, uh, uh, in the uh, utility sector. So pretty cool there. Um, but uh, yeah, Leggett and Platt, that's taken a step down. That's probably a buy point in the low 40s. That's probably pretty good. Uh, Verizon, nice 5% dividend yielder in the telecom space. Uh, Nike's rolled off a little bit. Um, the, the Canadian banks are continuing to outperform nicely. Uh, look at Marathon Petroleum, fantastic company. I chronicled uh, about a year and a half ago. I rolled that video out. I, uh, fantastic play here, uh, up over 70%. And, you know, you, you, you take these, and this is where you start to really enjoy some of these really large compounding growths because I have no intention of selling any of these. I don't care what they do. I mean, this could be up a thousand percent. I, I wouldn't care. Um, so a little bit different strategy in that I get asked all the time, Ryan, when do you sell? Well, these good companies, I, I don't plan on ever selling. Uh, I'll, I'll grow this to prove a point and uh, I'll, I'll give it to my kids someday. It's no problem. Uh, I don't need to sell Morgan Stanley to what? Take $35 in profit? I don't need to do that. I'm good. I don't need to sell UNH. UNH has been a Dow component and it always will be. Um, 3M companies really just been a hit, a hit on the chin. But, you know, this would be one of those that M1 Finance would say, hey, let's buy a little bit more shares in it because we're down a little bit in it. Um, there's Bank of Nova Scotia here. Come off a little bit, I'm noticing. Uh, but still up closer to 20% on the Canadian banks, doing quite well. Look at Charles Schwab up over, over, over 43%. You know, so have I carpet bombed the uh, the market? Yeah, I have. Um, did I do deep due diligence on all these? No, you don't need to. On good quality companies, man, these are value. I don't need to do due diligence to understand that UNP is the largest rail in the world. I, I don't need to do that. Uh, and I bought it. And just by doing that, I, I didn't look for anything strategic to say hey you know i didn't run cash flow models on these I, I didn't i didn't look at the debt load i didn't i didn't look at any of, the, of those because these good quality companies man they've been proven to to win out over time look at waste management up over 33 percent fantastic i'm skipping over some of these but you can obviously see where my my loyalty lies this is great got a little cummins in the portfolio this is awesome total energy has just been on fire as of late but I'm looking to cherry pick this Sanofi. This is a new addition. Uh, I added this probably two months ago, maybe even less than two months ago, and we're up already 11.55%. And for you guys that are per perhaps new investors and you're looking at this and you're like, man, I sure do see a lot of green in this. This is interesting enough. I always thought that investing was gambling. Well, I, I don't know. As long as people continue to eat Special K, uh, I think I'm good to go with Kellogg's. As long as people continue to... Well, I'll leave that one alone, <laughs> but you can kind of see where I'm going. That's one of my newer purchases here with Canadian Imperial, um, which is down. And then JP Morgan just rolled off a little bit with their last quarter. Um, they were a uh, mixed bag, uh, beat on the top and, and missed on the bottom. Uh, but Jamie Dimon had some uh, uh, pretty uh, hawkish uh, things to say about the um, uh, about the U.S. economy and the uh, impacts of the global uh, geopolitical situation right now. But um, I don't really care. 
Uh, is there a potential to improve uh, over time? Yes, there is. I, I'm a passive uh, investor in this portfolio, and um, it, it's it's one of those things that I'm I'm very excited about, and um, it's um it's it's a great way to invest. And like I said, this could really be a, a good way of of entering into the stock market for you guys, for you new investors um, that are interested in taking a hundred dollars a month and throwing it into the market. You can do it in a diversified manner. The portfolio is already built for you. M1 Finance does all the work in taking that $100 and, and spreading it out throughout the portfolio where you don't have to even pick and choose. The, the picking and choosing is done on, on, the, on the onset. Uh, and then when those dollars flow into the account here, they, um, they are dispersed accordingly. Guys, I really appreciate you tuning in to this uh, review of the dividend growth portfolio. Uh, I'll uh, continue to roll out updates on this as I do believe it speaks to um, the real strategy of passive long-term dividend growth investing, and I think it can apply to the message and put a little success into your portfolio. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in, and uh, we'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video.